Not really. Uh, a lot of people think he, you know, Ted is with us all the time, you know, telling us what to do. But uh, actually, at least in my case, he uh, tells me, you know, just go out there and do whatever I think is best. He sees nothing wrong with my swing. So uh, I'm pretty much on my own. I saw you hit one out of here the other day. That had to bring a smile to your face. Yeah, that was great. Uh, you know, as you know, I'm switch hitting down here this year, and I hit it out left-handed. And... Uh, so that was a boost for my, my morale, you know, right there. So uh, left-handed swing is coming back and uh, looking pretty good. Is this the first time that you tried to become a switch hitter? I used to do it when I was younger, and then I gave it up uh, a few years ago, about three or four years ago. And now I'm trying to go back to it so that I can get in there every day. Last year I was platooned, mm. uh, facing only left-handers, and I was only in the lineup maybe twice a week. And uh, it's pretty tough to hit that way. And it's a little frustrating sitting on that bench too, isn't it? Oh, definitely. I, I did it in Detroit in 70 and then again last year. And so uh, my ambition is to play as much as possible. I'd like to get into 162 games if I can. What would you like to hit this year? What would be a realistic figure for you? Uh, I know 400, <laughs> but... <laughs> no, a realistic figure I think would be uh, 280, somewhere along in there. Uh, but I, like I said, if I, if I can get in there every day, the hits will automatically, you know, start to come. Jim, I hope it'll be able to accomplish what we really want the Chamber of Commerce to accomplish, and that is that we will bring to Fort Worth in an orderly fashion economic development, uh, not just a sort of a catch-as-catch-can situation, but something which will really be of benefit to the economy, which will be a benefit to the industries which may come here, and which in general will make the quality of life and the economy of Fort Worth uh, better than it's been before. Now, what we're doing is setting up a task force or an economic development council of about 15 of the top citizens in Fort Worth in business and industry and the city government and county government. And we are asking them to coordinate with the North Texas Commission in bringing industry to Fort Worth in finding out what Fort Worth best can offer to industry and to various businesses which may come here.
We're talking cold, hard facts, and I say the Attorney General of Texas has a lot of explaining to do, and he better start explaining it now if he can, because I'm going all over this state so that the public will judge this race on the right reasons. Mr. Hill, are you saying that Attorney General Martin is directly involved in the uh, Sharpstown Bank? I'm saying this, that he was involved when he wrote that banking opinion, yes. Yeah. He didn't have to write that opinion. The bank wasn't suffering for a domicile. It had a 10-story domicile. He didn't have to give Frank Sharp a leg up to let him bring a shopping center in under the guise of a domicile. Yes, he was involved to the right there, we know, in helping to lay the foundation. He's definitely involved with Frank Sharp. Now, we don't know what all they've talked about. Mr. Martin has not told us. He's never been under oath. I'm saying this. There's a definite, provable, substantial link beginning at least in 67 and going through at least December of 1969 between these two men. The District Attorney's Office has asked the Dallas County Grand Jury to give special priority to the hot check case of a former DCA youth program worker named Bobby T. Watkins. The case was brought to the DA's attention by County Judge Lou Sterrett. It's no secret that Sterrett would like to see a federal grand jury investigation of the Dallas Anti-Poverty Agency, and this is the first time that a DCA worker has come under legal action. Last year, Watkins was appointed as the paid director of a tutoring project financed indirectly by the DCA. At that time, he was already charged with two misdemeanor hot check counts, but he was never prosecuted. As director of the tutoring program, Watkins was in charge of $5,000 in federal funds. He disappeared more than a month ago when delinquent bills and bad checks started turning up. He's reportedly someplace in California. The DA's office has more than 16 hot checks allegedly written by Watkins Two of them came out of the tutoring fund. If the grand jury issues a felony indictment as requested, then Watkins will be immediately extradited from California and brought back to Dallas for trial. In that case, both county and federal authorities will have a chance to conduct some of their own investigations. DCA watchers pose two questions. Why was Watkins ever hired to handle federal money when he was already charged with writing hot checks? And why is Judge Sterrett taking such a special interest in Watkins? That last question comes easy. Watkins could provide a springing board for taking some more hard legal looks at other more powerful DCA officials. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move. Chicanos are organizing to break from the Democratic Party, which has misrepresented them for so long. Along with La Raza Unida Party, we call for the abolition of the Texas Rangers, which is becoming one of the most excitable demands in the campaign. We support the right of working people in Texas, including government employees, to organize, to bargain collectively, and to strike, and we call for the repeal of the so-called right-to-work laws. Ms. Leonard, may I ask how closely associated the Socialist Workers Party is with the Communist Party USA? As a matter of fact, not at all. Um, on a national scale, we are running two candidates, Linda Jenis for president, Andrew Pulley for vice president. The Communist Party is running Gus Hall for president and another candidate for vice president. Uh, we disagree, unfortunately, in some ways on more things than we agree upon, I'm afraid. Well, I'd like to uh, stimulate them and motivate them and make them more aware of the relationship of politics to business. I want to focus in to them that government is the biggest business in America today. And government is owned by big business. And if government is to respond to their wishes, to their needs, then especially in this election year, they must become greatly involved in the total political process of this nation. The 70s uh, must be the era or the decade when we achieve political and economic uh, empowerment. I think the 60s was the decade when we had to fight for our basic rights to vote, uh, to sit at a lunch counter, to sit in a bus. But now the focus is on owning that bus, owning that restaurant, and uh, using the vote to make it respond to our needs.
people in this country could get together on their opposition to some of the very fundamental questions. We do work not only with uh, supporters of the Communist Party, but with all groups that are interested in common efforts like the anti-war movement and the women's movement and so forth. Are you saying, Ms. Leonard, then, that you are in favor of uh, dispensing with the free enterprise system? Yes, we are. We don't think that the free enterprise system even entails competition any longer. It's a monopoly system. It's a corporate profit system. It's a system that works against the interests of the majority of people and promotes policies such as the war in Southeast Asia, such as racism, such as sexism, which I think are a part and parcel of its economic functioning. Over a hundred spectators crowded into the courtroom this morning. This is the first time this much interest has been shown in the 12-day-old trial in Abilene. Most even waited through the hour and a half delay before court went into session while the charge to the jury was being prepared. It took almost 30 minutes for the judge to read the 12-page complicated document. The charge instructs the jury that a person cannot conspire with himself, that they must find at least two of the defendants guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, or none at all. Then the final arguments began. Each side has four hours of the jury's attention. Harold Jacquet presented the first arguments for the state, dramatically whispering at certain points. The young Austin attorney emphasized the time schedule involved in the alleged conspiracy and called Frank Sharp an accomplice in the crime. Jacquet said the case was the most important one ever to go to a jury in the state of Texas. Each of the nine attorneys told his impression of the testimony as the spectators carefully watched the faces of the eight women and four men on the jury, trying to speculate on this outcome of this important chapter of the great stock fraud scandal of Texas. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Judy Hanna at the Taylor County Courthouse.